So most of the things here should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, any questions on these or I'll just move on? Okay, so the thing about Facebook, if we go back to page, is that we have the ability to post content just like a, a regular user. And I'm seeing that if we go back to page, this is what my page looks like when someone visits my, my site on Facebook. My current web address is facebook.com slash victors dash bakery dash four seven blah 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 gibberish. I want simply facebook.com slash victors bakery. You should have noticed that inside of that about screen there is a spot there, Facebook web address. That's where you set your address up at the top so that it's a nice short name. The problem is and I never get a straight answer out of them. Sometimes you're able to claim the name right away, and sometimes mine says, I need 25 fans before I can claim a name. And sometimes I see that it says, you need 30 fans to claim that name. So I don't know what, what the true answer is. I remember it was 30 for a long time, and then someone said, oh, they finally took it away. You don't need a limit anymore. And now it's still there? I don't know. Yeah, they did take it away, they brought it back. So Facebook gives and Facebook takes. <laughs> so if you want a real name instead of that generic name that no one's going to remember, you're going to need to, in my case, get 25 likes at least. Some of you sometimes, I notice, you're creating the page from the beginning and right when you've got those six boxes to choose from right at the beginning, right away it there tells you, choose your Facebook name. So I don't know what their rhyme or reason is. But anyway, my Facebook page is obviously very boring. I need to add a company logo there at some point. I've got this other background graphic here, this cover page, I believe is what they call it. And people I've seen can be very creative with this. They put a background picture here that also somehow ties in with this picture. Like they've got their headshot right here, and then it still makes it look like they're a part of this background picture. The way that works is you have to have some Photoshop skills to combine two pictures together. It's complicated. But you do want to use both of these spots to put a graphic there to catch attention. If you don't know what to put there, get, it, get it examples from, uh, from your peers from your competitors. With Facebook, I can look up here on the search on the search box. I'm going to search bakeries and it's going to give me perhaps some suggestions. Sweet Cheeks Baking Company. Let's see what that's about. Oh, really? Very cool. Oh, really? And so you're looking at the competition, perhaps. Very cool photo that I want to emulate, and then the name of the company inside. So I'm just going to choose some random, let's see, what's a big famous like cookie company, bakery company? Mrs. Fields. Mrs. Fields, yeah. Mrs. Fish, Mrs. Fields. OK, there you go. So they've got their logo, the graphic. So check out the competition to get the idea of how you should brand yourself and what to post. We'll look at what to post in a moment. We're still getting there. But I'm going to go back to my home screen. You can either click home or click your logo. Home is where you're going to see your latest posts and such. But home, I mean, but the name of your business is where I'm at. I'm going to set a logo at some point. I'm going to set a cover image. And this is new here, create call to action, CTA. You hear that all the time in marketing, CTA, call to action. Something that calls to people to take an action. Something that causes an action, a result. So if you experiment with this, if you click create call to action, add a button to your page that takes people directly to your website or app. So either how does it look on a website? How does it look on an iPhone? How does it look on an Android? Okay, great. Choose a button. Do you want it to say contact us, book now, call now, use app, play game? It doesn't let you do everything. It doesn't let 
you say something like donate now. Well, maybe if you've got the charity option turned on. It doesn't let me do something like, uh, check this out. I want to use that terminology. It doesn't let me. I'm limited to these particular calls to action, calls to actions, and probably they will add more as time goes on. But currently it says contact us, call now, book now. It doesn't actually say visit our site, book now, call now. I've got contact us, though. It still says, okay, send them to your contact form on your website. Call now, phone number. Book now, just a website. So some of them are going to be like, here, send us a message. That's a way right there also to give people right away a way to send you your business a message, private message. Use app. Let's say you've got book now and a website, but it's also a link to an app. You've got an app on the App Store or iPhone store, whatever, you can put those links there. It's more advanced. But uh, the call to action, that could be pretty valuable. And so now there's going to be a button. In my case, for example, this is contact us. It could be book now. It could be download the app, whatever, within reason, within the particular options. You can test your button if it worked. We'll be seeing this terminology promote or boost many times. I'll get to that. View insights. How well is this working? Are people clicking on it? Who are the people that are clicking on it? The time of day. All of that stuff. You can edit it. You can delete it. So that call to action. Pretty useful. You can share the page, and that usually means share it to my friends. If I click that, share on my own timeline, friends timeline in a group, private message, I'm letting people know about this page, especially if it's brand new. I need those 25 likes. Maybe 25 of my friends can give me a like, and I can then claim that name. That's the share button. You're sharing it via yourself to your people your friends and family, your connections. So that, will that show it coming from Baker's Bakery when we do that, or will it show it coming from your name? It'll show coming from your name. Because that's what the option says right here. Share it on my own timeline. So it'll say, Victor shared this. Um, if I put it on a friend's timeline, it'll also say, Victor shared this with you. It'll clearly be marked that it's Victor's Bakery, but it will say that it came from you as the person. Right now I'm looking at my page as myself as a manager, uh, but I can look at it. How does it look like for a visitor? A brand new person visiting my site for the first time and such. Invite friends, suggest page. Invite friends is very similar to share, but I'm sending it directly to the people that I know. Maybe I can click on 25 friends here and they'll give me a like. So that's not, so doing it that way, inviting friends is not going to put it on your timeline. It's going to send people that request privately, please like my page. can send this also via email if you connect your Hotmail or your Gmail or iCloud or whatever. If you connect your Facebook with one of these services, this can send an email to those people to say, like our page on Facebook. That one was the suggest page. So there's like three ways here. Share, it goes to your timeline, please like my page. Invite friends, it goes directly to friends. So just page, it sends it via email to your contacts. And one odd thing, I didn't notice when they did this, but I noticed it when I made a mistake about it. Apparently now, pages can make pages. So it used to be only that as a person I could create pages. But now it looks like if I'm logged into this page and I choose to create a page, or create a page from the three dots here, this page itself here created a page. The weird thing about that then is if I'm logged into this page and then I go to manage pages, 
it might show me or might not show me all of the pages that I that exist. On mine it did show me all, but when I looked at your share and it didn't. That's weird. So I don't know. That's another weird thing that'll trip us up. So if I'm gonna make more pages, I'm probably gonna make sure that I'm logged in as my personal account and then go to create pages. Be careful because if you're in a page, if I go to that client, from that client it looks like I can create a page there, which could get confusing. While I'm here, very briefly, this is a client that has had activity, it's existed a while, and they have a new tab that you guys don't, especially if you have a brand new page. You don't have insights. As you get likes and activity and such, you will get insights. I'll show you how that looks a little later, but that's where it's going to show you what time of day was most popular, what kind of post was most popular, what gender paid more attention. Because people always ask me, what's the best time to post on, post on Facebook? What's the best time to post on Twitter? You're going to see plenty of blogs out there that tell you that. And I don't believe most of them. Because your audience might not fall into that audience, that pool of data. That blog writer, they might have great insights on a particular market segment, but your market segment is different. So if they're saying the best time to post is at 9 a.m., because all our clients are, you know, uh, business people, but your clients actually are night hawks, then it's not going to make sense to post at 9 a.m. when they're not awake. So insights is what will guide you to figure out what's the best time for me to post. But you'll know this as you use Facebook and as you post to Facebook, it'll start to build statistics. Insights. So there's different buttons we've looked at, timeline, there's about, there's photos, all photos that you've uploaded will be listed there, likes, this page can also like pages. As I, as I run this page, Victor's Bakery, I can also look up other pages such as Mrs. Fields. I'm in my Victor's Bakery account and in Mrs. Fields I can click like. And so what's happened is that my business page liked another business page. The purpose of that is inspiration. When I go back to my home screen, I'm going to start to see eventually the content of the pages that I've liked. Once I see that content, I can see what's the competition do? How can I do that? Or better, I never thought of that. I'm going to do my own version of it. So it is still useful for your page to like pages, simply for inspiration. Let's check out Nestle. So see here, even directly, a specific product has a Facebook page, Nestle Crunch. Not only can you like the Nestle company in total, you can like this one individual candy bar they sell, and apparently one million people have. So I'll add mine there. The point of that then is, I can see, I can see it here or at my timeline. I can see what they're posting. Now, obviously, I can't compete with the limited edition Peanuts movie bunch of crunch, but. Maybe I have an idea like that. That gives me an idea to maybe draw something or photograph something like that with my product. Obviously, I'm not saying take this photo and put your product into it. I'm just saying this idea is for you to look at the competition and see what they're doing, and then perhaps you can do something similar. And it looks like people here, it looks like they have their option that people can post onto the page. Um, does it append their comments? Sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't allow you to create the page on um, the page. Okay. I'm doing it and it tells you that you need to go back to the uh, Oh, okay. Hmm. It's good to know. Sorry. <laughs> so, we're seeing people. Haley Ford, 
the only Halloween candy I bought this year. And Nestle themselves replied, that's what we like to hear. Thanks for being a fan. So they seem to allow posts, and they probably moderate the bad ones. They take out the negative stuff so that everything looks positive. And that's something that you can do on your Facebook because it's your Facebook. Within reason. Um, so I'm going to go back to my home. Okay, so this is our practice page. What I'm going to do is practice posting some content. Um, I, I went back to my company page, so I clicked on the name of my page. And it took me back here and it says share a status, just like I can do on personal. I can share a status. Photo or video or a few things that are not available to regular people, as we'll see. And at the top right corner, apparently here, this is posting as Victor's Bakery. This is how, supposedly, you can post as a person or as the business. But it doesn't really do anything because I know that I'm in the business. If I'm as my personal self and I'm about to post here, I have to be careful if I'm posting as the business or personal. So if I click to add status, I can write something like uh, excited to finally on Facebook. Yes, there's a misspelling there, but let's say I didn't notice it. I can go back and edit my posts. Unlike Twitter, you cannot edit your tweets. Google Plus and Facebook, I can go back to edit my posts. It used to be on Facebook that they gave you a very short amount of time to go back and edit it. It was less than a day. I think it was like, you can only go back to edit your post within 15 minutes. And now I believe you can go back to a post you made a year ago and still edit it. For some reason. So I can add text. I can add a link. If I have a web address, I can also add it here. I'm just going to add one, but let's say let's say I add a page, an address. It's going to make a little preview about what page you're linking to. Try to grab a picture. If it's not the right picture, you can scroll through. So for me, it saw three pictures and it said, would you like to add these three pictures? So this is something I hadn't seen before. It looks like you can, if you add a web address it's, and there's multiple pictures, it'll create a sort of album of pictures that it finds for you. So each one of these has its own sort of picture. And I can go in and edit each one of these captions below the picture. And I can add a destination. I can make each one of these pictures go to a different page. At the bottom here it shows that three pictures are selected, but let's say I only want one picture, so what I can do is unselect these, and now only one picture will be added. This is the traditional way that, I, that I've usually seen by adding a link to Facebook. It'll create some sort of thumbnail picture, take some text from the link and give you a little preview of it, which can be edited. You can click somewhere there and craft that message. So we can add text, we can add links, it added a picture for me, or I can also select photo or video. I, what I cannot do is like what I did, what we did in Google Plus. We can't do bold, we can't do italics. There's a lot of options that I'll mention, but I'll go through them in a moment. I'm just going to post something. 
you know, that's not so different. You probably had experience in posting stuff, but I'm just going to post this. And again, think about it in terms of who cares, literally. Why would a person like that post? Why would a person like your page? Why would they follow you? Post stuff that entices people to like your page, like your comment, share your posts, comment on your posts. I'm just going to post something for whatever. I'm going to publish because this also applies like the other networks. You want to post some stuff before trying to get followers. I'll talk about getting followers, of course, just a moment. But I posted something. I made a mistake. I misspelled something. I have this little triangle, like a little dog ear, dog eared page in the corner of a post where I can go back to edit the post. Change the date I posted it. Edit post. More options. Hide it. Delete it. Not translations. Pin to top. That's like when we talked about Twitter. I'm constantly tweeting, but let's say there was a tweet that I really want people to see often. I can pin it to the top of my profile on Twitter. Same thing here on Facebook. I can pin this, and when someone visits my page, they will always see this first. See how it's got this little bookmark. It's not a pin, it's a bookmark. Why didn't they put a pin? But um, you can only have one at a time pin. Unpin that. Let's say I want to add a photo. If I click photo or video, it says upload photos, create an album, or a photo carousel. That's new. I haven't seen that. So this is like a side scrolling album, a little more modern. Sounds cool. So I can either upload photos or videos. If you have any to upload, you can simply click on that option and it'll open up to select. They did, yeah. It <coughs> seems new. I'm just going to select a picture. We can add text. Meet our new mascot. Carry the koala. Just because I've added a picture doesn't mean that's the only thing. I can also add a link if I simply type in my address or copy and paste victor.com slash about slash carry. It won't create the preview because you've already used it up for the picture. So it's sort of either or sometimes. If I add a link, um, the picture, I might want a different picture. If I add a picture, the link might not uh, activate the, the picture. Yes? I just um did it right now in the settings. You know how um when you first start making your page that um, tries to choose your target audience? Mm -hmm. In the settings there's an option also so you can choose a target audience for each post. Mm -hmm. Well, let me answer that one moment. Um yeah, you can go back into the settings and per post I can set an audience. The reason I didn't do it is because I'm going to talk about boosting posts, okay. which I think is more accurate. So I'll mention boost posting in just a moment. Um, so I'm adding text, I'm adding a link, I'm adding a picture. Okay, other things that I can add to it, I can apparently also add a feeling. So I can click that little thing there and I said, I'm also feeling this or watching this or celebrating or eating or whatever. So that's another way to perhaps reach your audience because then they can feel excited too, I guess. So this is just to put a personal face on your content so you can Why add you emotions. Really excited for What's that? So there's a little smiley right there. You click on that and then all of the emotions are right there. You say, I don't want that one. I can go to something else like watching CNN. No, I'm not watching that. I'm watching Spectre. There we go, I'm watching Spectre. Add a location. I can attach a location if my business is all set up. It could show up here. It's suggesting a bunch of things for me. But Victor's Bakery, if I did if I did create, if I did add my address and created a location and all of that, I can attach 
the location of my business to my posts. The point of that again is that that like Twitter allows people that are on their mobile phone, mobile devices, and it's got GPS. It will then let them uh, get a map to go to my business. I'm just going to choose something here. Notice I can choose someone else's business, and so I posted Victor's restaurant in Ensenada, so that map will be attached to my post. And then we've got the little clock, set date of your time to post, if I click that. When this year, month, this month. So right here I'm setting my my post in the future. I can set it to different dates. Um, so that way I can I'm going to say this will show up at 10 p.m. tonight. Maybe I don't want to do it right now. I want it to show at that time later on tonight. So I can uh, set this up in advance. Instead of being chained to the computer all week long, I can set this on the weekend and it will automatically post on Wednesday. That way I have other things to do and this posted on Wednesday. It's a little confusing. Set date and time of your post. Okay, this is a little bit more about was it now or in the past. You can backdate your posts. So let's say I had an anniversary for my business yesterday, but I was so busy in the store I forgot to post something. Let's say I'm going to post it today. The anniversary was yesterday, but I can go here, I can cheat a little, I can fib a little and say that I posted this yesterday on the day of the anniversary. So I can do that if I want to keep the legend going. So this is past. Future is hidden inside of publish. You've got publish, little triangle, schedule, and back date. So if I schedule it, here's where I have more control. This is what I was looking for. It's under publish, under this little triangle, schedule, schedule publish date, and here's also end date, the expiration date. That's hidden as well. So if I want this to run between this day and next Thursday, I can start it right now and I can schedule it to end Thursday the 24th. Now that's cool, that's a range. I can post something and it'll exist for a range. It won't get deleted, it'll still show inside of my publishing tools screen everything I've published but this will no longer be visible to people. And that's what I often want, especially if I'm a business and I'm doing coupons, that coupon doesn't exist anymore, so I want to delete it. I want to unshow it, that is. Schedule. that and then it's going to show me here one scheduled post and I can always go back to all my scheduled posts and publishing tools. Publishing tools will also show me my expired posts so that I can bring them back, run them again. Another kind of thing that I can post are events or milestones. If I click there, there's also note. Sometimes I see another one called uh, offers. But I've got event, milestone, and note. An event is a bit complicated, but this is to set up something that's going to happen at a certain date and time. I'm not going to go into it too much. You can explore it, it's pretty self explanatory. If you select event, it'll tell you to fill in all of this stuff. What's the picture for this event? Date and time? Is that a location? 
what kind of category to get found, can anyone post on it, or moderate it and publish it, so I'm not going to go into it, but it's kind of cool. You can set up events for people to be alerted to it. Are you going? Bringing a friend? It could be real events, virtual events. That could be good for building buzz, like let's say at the end of the month I'm going to have a sale. So throughout the month I'm peppering in posts that says don't forget our sale at the end of the month, and I create an event for it. So that there's this goal that people keep seeing. It's coming, it's coming, this event is happening, the sale at the end of the month. Milestone is similar to the other kinds of posts, but here it's sort of like a really big, look at me, we accomplished something. If I add a milestone, I can add a title, location, optional, when did it happen, a little text about it, and photos. And it shows up like some other of the posts, but it kind of looks a little different because it's got a flag and stuff. And this is simply like, we reached 100 likes today, milestone. We sold our 1,000th cupcake, milestone. And these can also be liked by people. I don't remember if they can comment on it, but they can like it. I believe they can also share it. And this is just another way of advertising, marketing, um, posting positive things gets you positive results. Someone saw this and thought it was cool, they'll like it. Likes help you get discovered. Maybe they liked it enough to share it. That'll help me get discovered. More people can see it. And so the types of content that we can post here or like every other network, but it's got extra things. And I haven't looked at Note, actually. What's Note? Click or drag to add a photo, title, write something. It kind of looks blog-ish. It kind of looks like Facebook is trying to do blogging here. Title. My first note. Yeah, this looks a lot like a blog, like WordPress or Tumblr. I am writing first blog. Oops. I mean note. And it looks like I can add a photo. Looks like I can add a little bit of larger and smaller text. So that's interesting. I hadn't seen this, so Facebook changes. Add a heading there, a larger text. Publish it. Okay, so I published a note, which looks a lot like a blog post, and people can also like it, comment it, share it. Well, if we know the basic nuts and bolts of Facebook, how to get around on different screens and settings and what to post, let's hand posting great stuff. We've already looked at two social networks, so you should already be getting ideas of what to post. There's nothing really unique of what to post on Facebook. Yeah, we have events and such. But the big thing is, okay, I've posted a few things, just like when I talked about Twitter or Google+, post stuff before trying to get followers. Right now, followers in Facebook are likes. I've got one like, myself. And so it used to be that when someone saw your page and clicked a like, they were basically giving permission that when you posted something, it would show up on their home timeline. You would like a page, and when you logged in, you would see the stuff that that page posted. That's how it was for a while. But then Facebook changed the rules of the game. Facebook, uh, Facebook changed it so that the content of regular people, mostly the friends and family that you're connected to, their stuff would take precedence and show more often than business page stuff. So that was catastrophic for us business pages because all of this time and effort that we're posting stuff on Facebook and someone gave us a like, I have 500 likes and I don't know what the algorithm is but let's say now 10 people saw it instead of 500. 
It used to be that 100 likes basically meant 100 people would see my stuff. 500 people potentially could see my stuff. And I don't know what the algorithm is, but now it's very, very, very low. Out of 500 people, again, maybe 100 see it. Maybe 70 see it. Maybe 200 see it. The algorithm dictates it in its trade secrets. No one knows how Facebook actually works, except the people that work in Facebook. So if we have that handicap now, if us as a business, a like didn't go as far as it used to, what is our recourse? I'm going to explain that right after the break. I'm going to take one more break, and I'll talk about how do you reach an audience now that likes aren't as valuable as they used to be. It's 8.23. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.33, and I'll tell you what the modern way to use Facebook is now.